You're listening to the After The Show Movie Podcast from ascully.com. Your weekly look at movies, video games, and more brought to you by your hosts, A. Scully and Sid Talk. We're addicted to movies. Are you? Welcome, Sid Talk. Welcome to After The Show. Hello. Welcome. How are you doing? I'm good, you? Good. <laughs> Happy Halloween. Tomorrow. Thank you. Hey, we've had three horror movies in a row, pretty much. We have. Is this a horror movie? See, I was wondering that, but that's not the point right now. Right now, before the after the show discussion was, you explained to me some things about audio. That was it. Yes. Pretty much it. Boring you to death. (laughs) No, not to death. (laughs) (laughs) There's a line. No. Don't know. All right. So it is Saturday, October the 30th. Happy Halloween. It's after the show. Your favorite movie podcast review show. That is presumptuous. <laughs> Goodness. And the movie we're looking at this week is Tatain. And it is a 2021 movie. You can watch it on streaming right now. It's from our friends at Neon who let us watch a streaming version. And it's not actually got a rate in this movie, Sid Talk. It's NR for not rated. Mm, I can see that. <laughs> so give us a synopsis of the movie <laughs> Tatain. Hmm. We'll... Are we going to do spoilers? Well, just give us a synopsis. I know, but i it's coming out of my brain and pouring out of my mouth. And Should so... I give you the real synopsis? Like you don't that? even want my attempt. This well, one, no, this I'll give a... you this one and then you can do yours after it. <laughs> well, that's not how we do it, but okay. It, it isn't, but in this case it is. Following a series of unexplained crimes, a father is reunited with his son who has been missing for 10 years. That's it? Yeah. Oh, wow, that is so not it. (laughs) Okay, I would say an effed up story about unconditional love. And you said the director even said that about it, and I didn't know that's what she had said about it, but that's what the vibe I got was this effed up lady, serial killer, dancer person. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. We're getting spoilers there, aren't we? Yes, I said it's just going to pour out. (laughs) Then like an effed up fire captain guy whose son is quote unquote missing for 10 years and all kinds of stuff going on. I think this synopsis on IMDb and on the back of the box is to be as vague as possible, really, because it sounds like something that isn't right. I mean, it is that. But that lures people in on the very false pretense. I mean, let's be honest. It does. And then they're like, what the hell did I just watch? (laughs) No, there is no. Even if they make it through. Anyway. Let's get on to the movie. There will be spoilers, so be warned. The movie Tatane, it's a French movie, by the way, we didn't mention. Subtitled, not a dubbed one. Yeah, and that's fine. In fact, you know, one thing I did notice about this movie, it doesn't have tons of dialogue. There's lots of nothing. Correct. Lots of nobody saying anything, but still lots of things going on, which I found fascinating, really. Broad strokes. I know you did a synopsis, (laughs) but now you can go deeper because we're full spoiler territory. What is this movie? This movie would be in my category of like, you said horror. I don't think that. It's not drama. It's not mystery. It's not crime. It just falls in this like, you said, what's his face calls his movie. Yeah, well, let's just explain who what's his face is. He is the director of Human Centipede, right. Tom Six. And he calls that extreme. He calls his movies extreme cinema. Right, that's what I'm saying. He calls that extreme cinema. I don't know if this is that exactly, but you described it well, is that while you're watching it, you are intensely uncomfortable at times. Even I was like, Whoa. <laughs> like, and I can handle a lot. Though. Yeah. So in this movie, you have a woman, pregnant, but... We're alluding to the fact that she's been impregnated by a car with no explanation whatsoever. So get over that, right? Yes. So she's impregnated by a car (laughs) and she's a murderer and she hooks up with a dude who's clearly has a terrible past and a very weird approach to things. Like he tells the guys at his fire station, I am God. This is my son who's been missing for 10 years. It's not his son. It's this woman. Everyone's looking at this person going, that can't be your son, but he's blind to it. Again, you can't question it, right? You have to just go with the flow. It's all very intensely, uh, like, gormy, you know? And then 
on top of that is this layer of these people are broken, damaged, terrible, horrible, criminal. And yet there are moments where you're like, yeah, that person deserves somebody to take care of them right this minute. Even the wife of the dude or ex-wife or whatever says to her, our serial killing pregnant by a car lady, you have to take care of him like no one else will. And what we know about our serial killing lady is no one's going to take care of her either. No, only a self maybe. Right. So then you have this layer of compassion for humanity, even though they're terrible, kind of like they deserve each other. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean, like they're going to balance each other out somehow. So it's a mixture of super weird, super uncomfortable, actually like moments where I'm just like, seriously, what are you thinking? What am, what am I supposed to be reacting to here? You know, like I'm pretty good at figuring shit out and even weird stuff and avant garde. I love it. I love things that make no sense. I do like some hint of an explanation to some things. This one I was fine with just let it go. Let it go. <laughs> Don't even. Yeah. Do not question the car pregnancy. Right. So once I was over that, I kind of moved into the territory of like, okay, just let it wash over me and any weird shit that happens, I'm good with it. And then I, it kept creeping in there, this like these broken people need some humanity. So I really enjoyed it. And also it looked gorgeous. It was like really well done. Even the special effects and her makeup and all that was really good. The uh, cinematography has to be, you know, it's good. There's a lot of my favorite cinematography. It has a lot of neon stuff and it has... You know, where they follow the person from behind a lot. Mm -hmm. And you, you're you looking at the back of the neck, basically, as they walk. I just really like that. What uh, I was most uncomfortable... I think it is an uncomfortable film to watch. Very. But, I mean, I've seen enough odd films to not be that uncomfortable. But most of the things that made me uncomfortable in this movie were not the gore parts or the, you know, the kind of gross-out stuff. It was more just interactions between people. Yep. They were weirdly awkward, and sometimes I couldn't even get a grasp on where they were with each other. There's a part where she is basically murdering like a house full of people. Yeah. And this guy comes out, and she has this kind of moment with him, like a Hugs. she's trying to feel something, or yeah, before. But then she's just murdering people. She has a like a character moment of trying to can I feel something from a person. Oh, no, I'll just kill them, right? Yeah, it's very hard to explain. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> you know, is... you understand exactly what's going through her head, even though she's not saying it. I was like, yeah, I get all this interaction with these people. I get that she's, it's kind of difficult to murder people, right? Like sure. physically difficult. I mean, I don't know, but I've seen it in movies. But she came into tough. this house thinking she only had to murder this one person. Just so happened to be more people in the house. And I don't think was... she was going to murder this person, by the way. So No, but maybe. Don't think so. I think that she was giving her a chance and then her, her switch got flipped, you know, in her brain. That was very uncomfortably, uh, like, yeah. because she's been impregnated by a car, there's something, in, and there's also something in her mind that she's, like, fascinated by metal or something. And this girl's got pierced nipples. And there's a oh, scene right. where she's like, can get into the sex with the girl, but she's like fixated by this nipple thing. And then she starts, it's kind of, oh, I was, it was making me wince. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I thought yeah. there was going to be some like biting off of. Yeah, it's pretty close. Yeah, but it, it, it made me wince though. We're thing. not making this movie sound like, I don't even know what. <laughs> it's sounding. Like we're trying to tell people to stay clear, but I say if you are open-minded to some weirdness, right? Don't watch it with the kids and don't watch it with your mom no, it's, unless your mom's a very interesting person. It's not rated for a reason, right? Correct. And it is, I said to you, it operates on a few levels. It operates on the level of a girl has sex with a car and maybe has a car baby, right? It operates like that. You say that like that's completely yeah, normal. Now that, yeah, like, that's, that's the, totally normal. <laughs> that's the wacky, like, you know, wacky sci-fi movie thing that's going on here. Right. And then there's also this relationship drama in the, the last two thirds. And, you know, there's points of the movie where they drop the um, baby part. I mean, it doesn't actually matter. You know, it's interaction between 
this father and his... I was thinking about it constantly. I started to not think about it and think about this relationship, how weird it is. I was thinking about how the hell do they expect us to believe that she's actually covering this? Yeah, she straps herself down really tightly and painfully. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. but And it's shown quite a few times, like, she's, you know, strapping her boobs down and strapping her pregnant belly down, which, I mean, you can see, like, when you see her body, how painful it must have been to do. Yeah, when you look at her, oh, did we mention also a gross um, out breaking her own nose? Oh, God. And she that, breaks oh. her own nose so she looks more like a man. Oh, my goodness. So her face is disfigured. Like It's grossing me out just to think about it. But you've seen her at the beginning as this like sexy pole dancer type person, right? Mm-hmm. And then she cuts her hair and breaks her nose and she's bags under her eyes. But to me, she's still like the woman. I, I don't see the, a man much. I agree. So, but so you have to kind of. I unfortunately had a little glimpse of what movie you am I thinking of, where they didn't pull off the. Um... Oh, that terrible one. Yes, and I felt bad about that, thinking that was that. a movie with Michelle Rodriguez. I can't remember what it was called, but she was pretending to be. A, yeah, it was really bad. She had it like was. glued on facial it hair. It was unfortunately very bad. The assignment. Yes, yeah. and. I thought of it and I was like, no, 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 no. This movie is better than that. Yes. <laughs> Way better than that. But I still felt it. But I had that. to take leaps. I mean, you've already taken the leap of she had sex with a car at that point. So True, but I still would like it to be a bit <laughs> more. But the thing is, all the people around are not convinced, no. even in the movie. So other characters, so I was like, okay, I can buy into this because all like, these other people are thinking like me, like, Dude, are you insane? This is not your son. Yeah. Clearly, this is not your son. And the dude at the The dude doesn't care. House even says, who is she? Like, yeah. ask her her name. He knows. So uh, then you're like, okay, okay. It's okay for me to think this because... And the father doesn't care. He just wants somebody. Correct. He just wants his son back. You and it I doesn't matter what guys it's under. You know I have a suspicion. So this is a perfect, like, ruse for our... I was going to say heroin, but she is not. She's not. You can't get behind her. She's terrible. She's your protagonist. Yeah. And your antagonist. But it's a nice ruse because she's on the run from the police. You know, you see a photo in a train station. And it's a nice ruse. She can be this guy's son and stay out of the picture. You know, the movie does go places at the end. But I don't think that matters so much, to be fair. What happens in that final sequence doesn't matter. You reckon? Not really. If it didn't happen, I think I would have had a good journey with this movie. Mm, I get what you're saying. You know? If yeah. she just came into the room and lay, on, lay down with the dad, mm. and then it ended, that I would gotcha. have also been fine. <laughs> but yeah, there's, there's a thing... Well, I think that, that was the whole point of the end, though. Yeah, I think so. But I also think it's more shock than anything like the Is she going to give birth to a, like a 1976 Datsun? <laughs> Well, I'd like not, to see that. But that wasn't the car she was uh, intimate with, so no. <laughs> no, it was a no. Cadillac. It was like Christine or Duel, right? Is that Or the uh, devil car, right? We've had car movies where yeah. cars or vehicles are possessed, we're going to say, or... And this was a car show car, like a lowrider that can jump up and down on its wheels. The visual of her having sex with the car is looking at the car from the outside and it jumping up and down on its wheels like and shining its headlights very brightly. So it, it's almost kind of comical to me, that part. It was a little bit, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, but then you see her in the back seat and she's holding onto the back seat belts and it's kind of intense. Mm-hmm. We are all, as an audience, going, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> it's is actually, happening? <laughs> like, a second ago, she was you know, in a house, and now she's out in the garage. Giant garage, by the way. It wasn't at her house. That was like, like a, the place where the car Like the showroom. car showroom garage, yeah. yeah. But yeah, she was over there, and now she's bouncing up and down in the car. And then it just starts to... I guess we're supposed to have established that when she was in that car wreck, and she came out... Yeah. Okay, so in the beginning, it's her and her dad. She's making like a car sound, like a... Like the whole time they're driving, it's driving him nuts. She gets out of her seatbelt, he swerves, he turns around to stop her, they smash. She smashes her head, they put in the titanium, which is the name of the movie, by the way. Titan, right? Is titanium. 
And when she comes out of the hospital after having this surgery on her head, the very first thing she does is hug and kiss the car. Yes. So now we're like, okay, she's into the car. And then we cut to her being a grown up and she's really into the car. So is it because, you know, you got to think, was that titanium from an automobile? Who knows, right? We didn't, we have no explanation whatsoever. You just have to sort of like, or was she, she had something going on before and we have no idea. I was silently hoping that Queen's I'm in love with my car would oh my be, God. you know, the credit music at the end. <laughs> I was, yeah, but then that's even more comical. We don't want it to be super yeah. comical. But I mean, uh, she's this. seriously in love with a car. As to the fact that at the beginning, you know, she's one of those, if you've watched The Fast and the Furious and you see all the fancy cars with the girls dancing around them, she's even gone to the lengths of becoming one of those girls so she can rub up and down on a car. Yeah. Which, that was an interesting angle. Yeah. And also, maybe on that circuit, she's kind of famous at that point. It looks like it because everyone's asking for her autograph. Yeah. So that also throws Spanner in the works when she starts murdering people. <laughs> first time we see a murderer guy. I don't think that's the first time either, is it? Oh, no, no, no. Because <laughs> she drags him into her car again. We have no explanation of what happens after that. It just... No. Is what it is. So it's an intense movie full of... <laughs> you reckon from the descriptions yeah. of all the individual things we've said? But I really loved it. I did too. It's my favorite movie, what we've watched from, you know, I'd take this over Halloween that we watched last week. Over and over. You mean Halloween Kills? Yeah, because this is, I don't know what's going to happen frame to frame. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm going with this. Oh, and now it's something else. Because it does flit around, does it, into different territories. Mm -hmm. And then I'm more uncomfortable with this drama between the father and the fake son than I am with the car having sex, with her having sex with the car. I'm, right. Because I don't know what that is. Like, it's kind of, <laughs> it's slightly horrifying. And then I'm like, you know, he keeps getting the son slash not his son and kissing on the side of the head all, a lot and getting real close and kissing. It's super and kissing. uncomfortable. And I'm like, is that like a French people kiss each other on the cheeks a lot and stuff? I'm saying, is that how French people Ew. are with the children? Is that I just a normal not. thing? It's really weird. Yeah, so it is no, weird. I'm going to say no. Yeah, I was going to say no, but then I was like, no, is this a cultural thing where I'm picking up on it differently because I'm not in that culture? No. <laughs> no 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 because it's very intimate it's because he's a fucking weirdo i don't know why you don't yeah, see but this the, actually he is a weirdo you know there's a couple of weirdo he, things he does right yeah he's into steroids shooting himself up he tells this guys who work for him he's god the steroids is he's afraid of getting older yeah so he's trying to be fit and then it shows you this one sequence where he's trying to do like pull-ups how old is he 60 i don't know He's in good shape, but he's not actually performing as well as he probably used to. He's a weirdo, and he's a, he's a weirdo, and the way he behaves with this person who he's trying to either convince himself or all the other people is his son is fucking weird. You can't give it, there's nothing else to it. It's not cultural, it's just weird. And you came up with a load of stuff. Which, I did. Which I, I don't. <laughs> I made it. I mean, it's stuff. not there. You have to start thinking behind, yeah. backward, behind the scenes kind of thing. I mean, you have to, because there is no explanation. As far as that guy's presented to you, he is a little bit weird, but he's also not overly... Okay, everyone, I'm telling you now, it isn't a little bit. And when normal people watch it, they will agree with me. Yeah, well, I agree, because <laughs> while I'm watching it, I hope this doesn't go where I'm thinking it's going to go, because it's really weird. The relationship between him and his son is starting to get awkward and weird for me. And then I'm like, but hold on, think about it. It hasn't actually gone anywhere yet. Let's hope it doesn't. And I'm watching it, and it, that's what's creeping me out. I'm like, in a minute, he's going to... Yeah. But then nothing like that occurs. You shouldn't give everybody the benefit of the doubt all the time. No, but nothing like that actually occurs. So at the end of the movie, you can't be like, well, that guy, because he didn't do anything. You it's know what close I'm enough. He knew. <laughs> he knew this person was not his son, and still he held his hand. And he cuddled him. And what he was was a completely Ugh. emotionally like wrecked and weak. And he just, like the lady said, the, the mom of the actual dead son said, he just needs, it doesn't matter, you, somebody else. He just needs something and mm -hmm. somebody to keep him Like alive. I said before, someone has to take care of him, someone has to take care of her. And they, yeah. they sued each other. But I loved all that. It's all complicated relationship-y stuff. 
<laughs> it creeps you out on one side. Sometimes it's a little bit sweet. Sometimes it's, you know, there's moment there's little character moments where he's trying to protect him and you know, you know, this person's a stranger, but he's got love, like actual I mean, it might be misfound, misplaced. He still loves his idea of his original son, which we don't know where he went. Right? I know what happened to him. <laughs> <laughs> you can pretend all you want, but I know. I mean, because you don't Because we saw into... him, imagine the son, the missing quote unquote son, burning up in a fire and the father's like paralyzed, right? Well, this child's been missing for 10 years. The guy's a crazy fucker. He's into fire because he's the fire captain and he acts weird. And he's acting weird about this woman who's pretending to be his son. He killed the kid. Actually, I well, mean, we don't know that. No, that's you, my, you don't. That's but my... how it came across to me was completely different. It was like, he's a fire person. He's lost his son. Trauma in his mind is put piecing things together and he's, he's living a nightmare all the time. Yeah, but that's because you give people the benefit of the doubt and it's not correct. Well, that's how this movie works on different levels. Because you see it one way, I see it the yeah, other way. Yeah, but you're incorrect. But neither of us are right. No, I'm right. <laughs> it's very, it's a very easy equation. I say it, I'm right. But I am exactly. kind of in love with the film. I think it's really... I, I loved it. I mean, yeah. I loved it as in like it just stimulated the shit out of me. And I love that about when a film can do that, make you be like uncomfortable and weirded out and wonder like wow thinking about the people performing in the movie and all of it it's really yeah. good and that thing i mentioned at the beginning of doing a lot by saying very little which happens a lot during the movie mm -hmm. there's tons of stuff where it's just her like maybe strapping herself up there's a lot of things going on in her mind which she's actually telegraphing to the audience and she's saying nothing like and there's not a lot of dialogue between anybody really is it it's mm -hmm. like the fire station dudes, the mm -hmm. rest of the dudes, they do some weird stuff in that fire station. Yeah. Like, they just start dancing. They party like, and get high and, like... Smashing each other like a... Like a mosh pit. Yeah, like punk mosh pit. I don't know if that's a another French thing that people do that we... We'll, I don't know. <laughs> I was like, this is just really weird behavior that's going on. You know, on. France is not, like, on another planet, right? <laughs> well, I've actually been to France. I didn't see any mosh pit in Fireman. Yeah, but were you ever in a firehouse? No. Okay. Maybe that's why. See, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> this movie stars, and it's her first movie, actually. She's called Agatha Roussel, and she plays Alexia, which, which is our protagonist, let's put her. Mm -hmm. Definitely not a hero or heroine. Well, that, yeah. Well, she's the main person, the yeah. protagonist. The How antagonist is also her because it's her being terrible. So True. How did you like her? I thought she was amazing. Like, really all in. There's no hesitation. Or it didn't feel like it. Now, maybe she did have, but in what we see is she is all in. Yeah, hardcore. There's a lot of nudity from her. And a lot of the people in the movie, right? Mm -hmm. Which she just has to go with. But then there's also a lot of... She has to look like a, a man. Not a boy. A man, right? She doesn't pull it off, though. So. I don't think she pulls it off, but she does pull off, like, she shaves her own head. That's not a wig that she shaves. And Yeah, we I noticed one thing about the progression of the movie. She slowly goes from having this, like, large... Her, she's got full head of hair, like, blonde, bleached blonde, and really curly and feminine. And, you know, she's a exotic dancer, essentially, with the on the car and stuff. It's a big head of hair, and then it gets a little bit smaller, and then it gets a little bit chopped off, then it gets half shaved, and then it gets fully shaved. It's like one of the things of the trance, what do you call it, like her transformation yeah, like, situation. Like it's everything's being taken away, but in like these slow... Yeah, to where she's just the shell of what she is. Yeah, basically, she all she is is like a vessel to deliver whatever. Right. True. Cool. <laughs> At the end. I mean, yeah. she's just, yeah. Yeah, that's true. And we've also got, I mean, I only put the main people down because they're in the majority of the scenes. Vincent London, who plays Vincent. What do you think of the it? The creepy fire guy. Creepy fire guy. <laughs> yes. I mean, he was a fine. loving father. I, he I was might... not a loving father. <laughs> Stop. Stop being so wrong because it's terrible. He was terrible. Terrible and weird. He, he put in a really good performance. He did. That part's really good, but the character... Ugh, ugh, there was ugh. many times where I was like, he's really good. Like, he, he's really selling what he's saying. And then sometimes I'm like, 
I don't know what you're trying to deliver here. And I'm kind of glad I don't know. Cause... It's a little bit like the bad lieutenant. Yeah. yeah. Actually, kind of, yeah. Original bad lieutenant, not the Nicholas Cage version. Yeah. Like, like you think, well, you know, it's a guy in, he seems he's to be just... a guy in, who's in control or whatever when you first see him, but then. He's 100% fucked up. Yeah. When you start seeing him. <laughs> like, that's the reality. Himself. Yeah. 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 At first, I thought he was doing heroin or whatever, but he's doing steroids to try and keep himself exactly fit. Maybe that's also a thing that's running through his head all the time. Is I'm with all these young firemen who are all tough and buff, and here's me as an old dude, and they all kind of look look at him as though he's the dad, the father of the whole place, right? But he mm, wants to be more like he's like the weirdo. He wants to be yeah, known as God. Theme. It, that's also. what I said like three times. He's a weirdo. No, I just find him, I don't find him a weirdo at all. I find him like a broken shell of a whatever he used to be. weirdo. <laughs> because he doesn't <laughs> Let actually the people do anything watch it totally and weird. Then they will all agree with me. They will understand exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, he doesn't really do anything weird. He does loads of things weird. He cuddles a person, kisses them. Holds their hand when he's trying to convince himself or other people that this is his long lost son. Now. It's weird. It might be weird, but it's not. There's nothing wrong in anything he yeah, does. Yeah, it say. was. Yeah. Wrong. Yeah. <laughs> it's directed by Julia Ducanot. Is that right? I don't know. I don't know French. Ducanot. Let's say that. She uh, directed the movie Raw. That was the first movie five years ago. And, and which uh, one's Raw? Explain to the people. Raw is the, like, cannibal movie. Mm -hmm. It's like a hazing. There's a lot of hazing going on in the un university. I thought right? you didn't watch Raw. I watched no, it. No, I did watch it after it. you told me it was yes, good. Yes, I, I really it. liked it. It was on my docket one year for my Halloween movie. It's movies. a uh, eating people movie. <laughs> yeah, but it's very unlike anything you've yeah. seen before. Yeah. Yeah, but this is, this is more out there than that one is, even. <laughs> Because yeah. that one still follows like a horror movie type. But this one, you know, it goes different. Uh, yeah. That one's more digestible, let's say. Uh, oh, I get it. You get it? This I get it. This one, you've got to be into kind of out there things to get with this one. True. What do you think of the direction? I love the cinematography, but I know that's not the direction, but it was awesome looking. Mm -hmm. It's really well lit at all the time. Yeah, Even when you're gorgeous. in a dark area, it's well lit. Looked amazing. Yeah, I thought so. And uh, Julia did a great job directing because, you know, even though it's so out there, mad and stuff, it feels like personal, doesn't it? Like you're looking into some personal thing. True. I just listened to uh, an interview with her just after we watched it there. And she had a dream. This is where the idea of this movie came from. She had to flesh out the rest of it. But the dream was that she gave birth in a bed while she was asleep to a car engine that was leaked all oil all over her floor. And she didn't understand what that was. Well, this is very accurate depiction of that. <laughs> <laughs> Good work. So she had to, like, take that idea of that nightmare and, like, put it into, you know, an actual... So that's where okay, the idea my first from. question would be, honey, let's have a talk about why you're dreaming this. Yeah, well, she made the movie <laughs> Raw, let's say. <laughs> Five years before, she right. made this traumatizing movie called Raw. So IMDb reviews, what are those? IMDb reviews. There's a website called IMDb, the Internet Movie Database, on which people, all the people, can go write reviews. Mm, legitimate, you can just judge for yourself. But you like to go on there and find the ones that are one star and then make fun of them. Shouldn't this be interesting uh, for this movie, how people <laughs> react to it? If more people like it than dislike it, as much as I like it, I'd be very surprised. All right. So these are the people that gave this movie one star. The first guy says, I sat through a very strange interpretation of what your mum means when she says your love of cars will one day get you into trouble. <laughs> it's very bizarre. I mean, that was a sense of humor in that one. Okay, I got it, I got it. This one says, this is the worst movie I have ever seen. There's no point to it. No storyline, nothing. Yawn. Of course you're going to say that. You're going to take the time of your life to tell us that. Next guy. French cinema at its most stupid. <laughs> Every scene of the movie was the stupidest scene ever seen. Oh, lots of scenes in there. <laughs> what else we got? We got 
Don't waste your time and money watching this garbage. It makes no sense. There are two types of edgy. The good one that a 12-year-old with a million dollars can make. This is the latter. It's just bad. Well, you didn't explain what the latter is. I know. Is. What was the other one? I was waiting for the two explanations. Yeah, me, I wanted the explanation. And then finally, ugly, boring, slow, and pointless. The fact that the critics like it is unexplainable. The fact that the director won the Palm d'Or at Cannes is just sad. This movie is a rare example of time wasting. Mm. That's it. It's that good old chestnut of wasting my time. Yeah. You know what? You didn't have to watch it. No. Nothing bad didn't. happens to you if you hit stop and then go plug in whatever your favorite fucking movie is. Then you'll be fine. All right. I'm not defending this movie particularly because I do understand why a lot of people would be like, ew. <laughs> right? I mean, we both understand that. Yeah. Yeah. So no extras here because this is streaming. You can stream it now. It's from our friends at Neon. Conclusion and score, I am giving, I'm giving to Tan a 9 out of 10. Oh my goodness. Flabbergast. That's a lot. It is. I really enjoyed it. I know you did. I'm going to say I'm in the 8 range, 8.5, because for what it is, it's it fulfills all, it ticks all of its own boxes. And then, you know, but I didn't gain anything from it other than, wow, I really liked watching that movie. Yeah. I like people, it's kind of like taking a risk. Yeah. I like that sort of stuff. I don't know if that deserves a higher score just because. I think this was, for me, this movie is well executed in all aspects. I felt a lot of things, maybe things that I was like, oh, you know, maybe I don't want to feel those things. <laughs> yeah. But I felt them regardless. That's good. I enjoyed the visuals. It also gets really crazy in parts which i do like about movies you, you know? do and while the ending i don't think is completely satisfying get what it was saying yeah there's also another type of person who'd watch this movie and say i don't even understand anything that happened like what is that and that's fair because that's i don't fair. understand because it's on purpose so. yeah so yeah nine out of ten and you give it 8.5 8.5 yeah i'm going with that all right, so next week we're going to review the movie The Colony. It's a sci-fi movie, Sid, so you like those. I do. I love sci-fi and aliens and horror and, and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> I do. Yeah. Well, we'll look at that next week. Movie recommendations. I am going on the, the tip of this movie, Tatan. I'm going with Crash from David Cronenberg, oh which this reminded me of slightly. There's a lot of gross out you know, body things with metal going on in this movie. I catch what you're throwing. Yeah. And my other one is from Brandon Cronenberg, talking to the Cronenbergs, and that's Possessor, which also, weirdly, this movie gave me vibes of. Oh, okay. You yeah, know? yeah. Because Possessor's pretty intense also. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so Crash and Possessor. And mine are because this year I'm just going back to the 80s and I'm still only up to like 1982, 83, something like that. And they have nothing to do with this movie whatsoever. They're just movies I have seen. The first one is Tootsie, a classic. classic. I don't know if it holds up to modern day of anything, but in my mind, I probably watched it 150 times because if it was on HBO, I was watching that shit. And The Verdict, which I don't remember fully, but I know I went to the theater and saw it. The Verdict? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know it. I don't think. Who's in it? I don't know. Is it Tom Cruise? Mm, I thought it was Robert Redford, but I could be wrong. Right. Well, we're not the authority <laughs> on the movie. My recommendation is, I don't know about this movie, but I've yeah. seen it, so watch it. Or try it, whatever. All right, so a scully stuff. I've been playing a new game this week. It's called Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> now, there was a, a Telltale game, Guardians of the Galaxy. Do you remember? Mm-hmm. This is not a Telltale game. This is more of a... Well, Telltale doesn't exist anymore. Right. While it is a story game, it's not like one of those choose-your-own-adventure types. It's it's an action game, but with a lot of story. I've never heard so many lines of dialogue in a game in my entire life. Yeah, I remember. I was kind of not watching, but yeah, there was yeah. a lot. These characters, the Guardians, who you're playing, and this isn't based on the MCU version of Guardians of the Galaxy. It's like the comic book versions, but it also... Bor <laughs> it's weird because... In the comic book, they obviously can't use like popular music and stuff because it's a comic book, right? They don't. There's no music playing. But in this movie, there's a 
licensed soundtrack that features like all your favorite music from the 70s and 80s, basically. And it's playing all the time, you know, mostly. Mm. Everybody in the game um, is talking constantly. If that's something that might get on your nerves, you probably wouldn't want this game. Even when you're not fighting, you're walking between point A and B. Walking between point A and B usually involves everybody talking to each other, always. And like in the Telltale games, you can choose where the conversation goes. So you can say, if you think Gamora is being a bit of a dick and she's like being rude to everybody, you might have two choices, like let her do it and kind of encourage her or like cut it out, be better part of the team kind of thing. So you can do that. But then the main game is this, you know, it's a cool single player Guardians of the Galaxy story that might even, I would say, this will be controversial probably, but I'd say the story of the game might be better than the second movie, Mm. this one. And I'll give you like just a small plot point. Peter Quill, you know him, you Mm. love him. Chris Pratt plays him in the movies. He slept with a lady who is a, what what do you call those people? A Cree lady. And she's like high in command in the Cree army, you know, on one of his like escapades. Because he has a very good judgment. Yeah. Because <laughs> he is, even in the comics, he's played more of like a kind of a kind of a bumbler, you know? He slept with this lady like 12 years ago and he's not seen her for 12 years. And when he meets up with her, she's here and she's also got a 12-year-old daughter. So do the math. Mm-hmm. And that's what's going on. And then the movie, the movie, the game becomes this quest about him and his newfound daughter who happens to be a Cree person. And it's really, really interesting. And I think it's as well wrote as the movies. And they do those cool sequences where you're either flying through space, going to a new place, you know, that you see in the movies. And then they play in Rick Astley's never going to give you up as they're all flying. You know, it's all, it brings you back to those movies. Got a lot of nostalgia stuff. It's got a really, we all know from watching the movies, the sad story about, Peter and like his parents and stuff got like a new take on that, which is cool. You get to visit Peter's house in the eighties while his mother's still alive and you get to like reminisce around the house with her and it's kind of chugs at your heartstrings a bit, especially for people, you know, like me. Who, Explain. Uh, well, I lost my mother at an early age, like he did. Do so you uh, identify with this guy? Identify. Yes. That's it. I get it. So it tugs on your heartstrings a bit, especially when. His mother's been dead for many years, but all of a sudden, in his memories, he gets to relive this day with her. Guardians of the Galaxy, it's, um, you know, you don't see these very often these days. A single player, it's not online or anything like that. It's just a cool adventure that you have on your own. There's no multiplayer, and you get a cool story. I haven't finished it yet. I'm probably about halfway through, but I will, and I'll report back to you next week. And the other thing, it's not a game. I just want to say, that Curb Your Enthusiasm is back on HBO. And last week's episode was hilarious. These people don't know how much you love it. I was very late to the game as well. I didn't start watching Curb Your Enthusiasm when it came out. Mm -hmm. I saw a random episode or something, like maybe in the fifth season, and I was like, holy shit, this is hilarious. Why did I not know about this show? And then I proceeded to watch them all. Did you watch them all with me? I think so. Do you like it? Uh, Yeah. It's funny, isn't it? I mean, mean, if it never came back, I'd also be fine. But yeah, I do enjoy it. I think you would say that about anything, though. Correct. (laughs) (laughs) You are correct. So what's for dinner, Sid Talk? Impossible Whoppers. It's impossible, though. One of your favorites. I'll have to go out in traffic to get it, but I'm willing. And what is your advice to the people? And this time, advice and not it's just not a advice. laundry list. This isn't advice. Uh, this is going to be controversial and people aren't going to like it and that's fine. Okay. I'm not known for giving a shit. You know, this idea of woke. Yes. Isn't new. That's about it. But the bottom line the bottom line. It isn't new. You're not introducing an idea to about your parents not understanding how racist or gender biased or ignorant or out of the loop they are. You didn't invent the fucking idea about how society is against certain groups of people and you're not, or that you understand why that's bad. You didn't invent it. No generation invented it. It's forever. 
It's a fucking human condition that we all wake up or the veil is lifted for us about some things in society and in culture, about the world, about nature, about each other, about ourselves at some point during the course of the time we are alive. So if your thing is, oh my God, I was an asshole to women and now I'm not, how can the whole rest of the world remain assholes to women? I'm no longer an asshole to women. We're all terrible. Men need to be better. (laughs) So let's all just be better. Like I'm woke and see, I invented the idea of getting better. No, you didn't. Nobody did. (laughs) Like it just is a thing. The real thing is, because it'll go on forever as well. This isn't like, this is a, a phase, a chapter, right? A book, you turn the page and it's like, oh, during this millennia or during this hundred years could be our century. This is what humanity started talking about. And whoever's looking back on us from a billion years in the future is like, duh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> really? You know? It's like watching a two-year-old learn how to, like, eat their own food with their all of their utensils or whatever properly. And you're like, dude, I did that 20 years ago. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We're not inventing the idea that, oh, society's broken because some people have nothing and some people have billions of dollars. I just discovered this. And now I want to make a change and make it different. I'm awake now. Look, look, I've invented an idea that you can discover things about humanity. And then try to fix it, which is the good part, right? It's always the good part that once the veil is lifted, the man comes out from behind the curtain. If you know what I'm talking about there, Wizard of Oz people, you know, like pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. When in fact, the man behind the curtain is projecting an image that isn't a Wizard of Oz. It's just a dude who happens to know some tricks, right? And once you know the tricks and you know behind the curtain, you can't unknow it. So what do you do? You go forward. But the whole rest of the world also is involved in this. It's not like, look how great we are. We discovered that people are racist and they hate things that are new and they like to be horrible to women and they're violent. And really? Wow. No one's ever noticed that before. No one in the history of humanity has never noticed this. All of this doesn't mean that you shouldn't try to then keep spreading that idea, right? Like, don't be hateful toward this idea of wider spectrum of gender. Like, why? Instead of being mad at the world because they're not woke, I'm putting that in quotation marks, just be the person who is aware of this and speak about it and live it and be it. And if someone wants to talk about it, talk about it. Like, I don't know how else to say it except this idea that you've discovered the world is terrible and now you're going to fix it. It's great. Do it. (laughs) But don't be a fucking pretentious twat about it. Thank you very much for your input. (laughs) Is that advice? No. That last part, that sentence there at the end, that, see, that was probably very, very unreasonable thing to say, but I just feeds, it, it feeds me up. I get fed up with this idea that it's new. It's like when someone discovers veganism or a religion or that working out is fantastic. And all of a sudden, what do they do? They go crazy about it and they just want to suck everybody into it. And it's like, how can you not be vegan with me? And like then a be cult. Dis- yes. And then be disappointed in the whole world because the whole world isn't now what you've discovered that, by the way, has existed for, you know, tens of thousands and more of years. You're just now figuring out, which is great. Again, don't, it doesn't subtract from opening your eyes, from being awake, from lifting the veil. That's the best part. But then don't judge everybody because they're not at the exact precise moment that you're at. Because in a million years from now, or 10,000 years, however long we last, four billion years, this conversation will still be going on. I mean, I won't be here, but someone will be listening to my podcast and be like, yeah, man. She was right on. She was so awake back in the day. All right. So thank you very much, Sid Talk. Sure, sure. Anytime. Ascully.com is the website you can go to. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. We're all on there. We're also on Amazon Music. I put us on there this week. Nice. So now we're on Amazon Music, Spotify, iTunes. Interesting. iHeartRadio. We're everywhere. Everywhere that podcasts are sold and bought. You can also podcasts email. Are sold? Yeah. I think they are, actually, some of them. If you want to listen to Joe Rogan, you have to pay. 
I don't, so I don't. <laughs> email aschoolie at aschoolie.com. Don't email Sid Talk. She doesn't like any of you. Thank That's you. That's not correct. And finally, stay classy. The uh, director of this movie, who I'm going to butcher her name now, Julia Ducano. Is that right? I don't know. It sounds French. It does. I can't wait to see what she does next. Awesome movie. Thank you. Nice. And I'm going to say, think for yourself, because if you're not doing it, somebody's doing it for you. <laughs>